So welcome to today's topic where we're really looking at closing the old chapters to, to start anew. And I want to share with you on today's coaching clinic a very simple but a very powerful um, piece of information, perhaps is the best way, not a very glamorous way to describe it, but piece of information that will help you uh, move gracefully from the old chapters that you're experiencing into the new and I think that this topic is just it's just so fresh and alive still for many people you know I was just sitting down to lunch with some friends today and uh, my friend Justin was just telling me you know like he doesn't know what he wants to do next he's moved to Italy he's created a lovely home for himself and his partner he's even begun a blog but but he really doesn't know how he wants to make an income and as I was listening to him I was thinking how many of us are in a moment of transition whether it's from our old way of working trying to find a new way our old way of running our business into a fresh new launch of something or maybe from the perspective more around from maybe having gone through a loss or a breakup or a divorce or a sudden letdown to navigating transitioning into a new chapter. So this subject is still very much alive. It's alive in my heart. I'm sure if you're here, it's alive in your heart. And at the end of the coaching clinic, which will finish a bit early today because I've got to get to an appointment on the hour. So at the end of today's coaching clinic, I'll share with you an opportunity that I'm excited to announce. And I know that those of you listening each week to this clinic um, will be glad to hear this announcement. <laughs> so let's just begin our coaching clinic today with a gentle grounding meditation. And on this meditation, our focus will be in what I might describe as cutting the cords to the old chapter in order to allow the new chapter to come through. You might be clear on what your new chapter is. You might be very certain at this point that you have a start date for something and an end date for something. Or you might be in this period of transition that many find themselves in, which really just circles around this way doesn't suit me anymore, but I don't quite know how to get to the new or what the new way is yet. Let this meditation support you and ground you in, in energetically letting go of the old, opening up to the new. Because if there's one thing I've learned on my journey, we can have a million wonderful ideas. We can have great things that we want to give the world. But if we're not energetically open, meaning if our mental bandwidth is too little or our capacity to receive is too small because we're tired, we're always giving to others, we're exhausted in some ways, then it's hard to call in bigger things. It's hard to call in anything new. So this meditation is really here to ground you, support you, and open you up to the new. So just close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let your breathing come to the count of four. We find the count of four to be quite grounding. So in through the nose, two, three, four, and out through the nose or the mouth, two, three, four. Keep that rhythm going in through the nose. Two, three, four. And out through the nose or the mouth. Two, three, four. Feel yourself relaxing into the chair or wherever you're sitting. Feel yourself supported by whatever you're sitting or lying on. 
And just let the rhythm of that breath hold you and support you. Visualize roots coming from your feet down through the ground, down into the underground, and right down to a rock at the bottom of that earth. Wrap those roots around that rock. See golden light being poured down through your head, down through the back of the spine. Really notice this light being poured, a gorgeous elixir of light being poured down through the spine, down into the spine. The spine is behind you. The spine supports you. Just as the old chapter has served you and supported you, let's allow this meditation to begin to leave it behind us in a supportive way, just like the spine supports us from the back, from behind. Golden light emerging through the spine, clearing the back. And now see golden light coming up from the rock, through the roots, through the floorboards, into the feet. So you have this golden light going down through the spine and this golden light coming up through the body now, through the feet, through the ankles, up through the shins, the calves, the kneecaps, in through the thighs, right up to the hips through the buttocks at the back, all the way up through the spine again, and up through the front of the torso too, through the abdomen, and on up through the chest, up into the throat and out through the shoulders, up through the neck and into the face and up to the top of the head. And see the light swishing down or through the hair and out through the shoulders, the arms, the lower arms, the hands, the fingertips, your whole body covered in this light. And from the center of your chest, around the solar plexus area, if you're familiar with that term, it's just a few inches above the belly button. Just visualize now a cord a cord of light extending from that center to something or someone that represents the old for you. Something or someone that represents a space in which you know it's time to let go. Fuel the light from your solar plexus towards this person or this situation or this environment that represents your old chapter. I encourage you to choose one. Don't choose a million things right now or a million different people. Just focus on the one that comes freshly to mind. Send golden light energy through that cord to that person, place or situation. And set an intention now mentally and energetically. I release with ease. Thank you for serving me so well. Now in the middle of that core of light, I want you to see 
another cord extending upwards to the heavens. And this cord of light is reaching towards divine mind. That could be an entity for you, something or someone you believe in, or it could simply be further light, a sphere of heavenly light that you trust in. Doesn't matter. You're simply letting this particular cord move beyond you and up into a higher level of consciousness and set your intention now to have the support, the help, the endurance, the direction of this divine mind energy that's beating your heart right now, that's taking your breath each moment, that's growing the trees and spinning the planets and turning acorns into oak trees and embryos into babies. Set the intention now that this divine mind energy supports you in respectfully and gently and gracefully letting go of the old. So that this person, place or situation is also receiving the divine mind's support and energy and comfort as you let go. And now from that divine mind cord that's reaching up, send that divine mind light energy down through the cord again, and this time all the way down through to the underground. So there's a, there's a straight line here. What you should be able to visualize is this cord coming from your solar plexus to this person, place, or thing that you're ready to let go of. And in the middle of that cord, a cord going up, up to divine mind and a cord going down directly into the ethers. So you have beautiful, divine, loving light energetically shifting for you. Staying centered now. Just begin to notice that the cords are all dissolving beautifully in their own time. Your attachment or your concern or your worry about this letting go is dissolving. So that cord is falling away, but it's falling away gently with the help of the cord of divine mind that's reaching up into the ethers and down, reaching up into the heavens and down into the ethers. Now visualize yourself simply standing, clean and clear of this cord, relaxed, gentle, and easy. Breathing in through the nose, two, three, four, and breathing out through the nose or, or the mouth, two, three, four. Breathing in through the nose, two, three, Four, breathing out through the nose or the mouth, two, three, four. And when you're ready, just begin to open your eyes, moving your fingers, moving your toes. 
trusting in the clearing that's occurred energetically. Come back to the room. And you're welcome to type in the box, in the chat box, anything you wanna share. How did that feel to you? Were you surprised at what showed up as the thing to be letting go of or the person or the place? Did you feel any energetic shift? And don't worry if you didn't, you know, a lot of, a lot of closing the old chapter. Thanks, Charlene. I feel relaxed and emotional. Okay. A lot of closing the old chapter is based on your readiness, your intention. And I really want you to be gentle with yourselves because you could be in a space where you're very... Um, intellectually ready to, to close the door on the old but energetically you're still attached please know that that will you'll close a gap there between the intellect being ready and energetically being ready you, the gap will begin to close where you just become more and more ready to, to let go. Rather than get frustrated with yourselves about, I know this is no good for me. Why am I still up to it? Why am I still here? Why am I still doing this? Why am I still in the old chapter? Rather than get self-critical about that, I invite you to just check in on your intention. On a scale of one to 10, where am I energetically in relation to letting this go? So let me give it to you this way. And this is the key sharing in today's clinic that I wanted to, to get across. Um, The way that we close the old for a long time, I would experience memories of Francesco, my fiance, who died suddenly a year and a half ago. I would experience memories of him. And I would be filled with grief and filled with sadness and filled with regret or remorse, whatever you want to call it. I was not in a space energetically to let go and see a fresh perspective. I would get memories and I would feel sad and loss. At some point as I went along, I energetically opened up to realizing that I could have memories, but they didn't have to make me sad. So the way I was able to close the door on the old chapter of Every time I think about my fiance, I'm, I become a mess. The way I was able to close the door on that chapter was to see that I could use my memory to help myself or to hurt myself. And when I was using my memory to help myself, 
what normally happened was I stopped dwelling on the past. I stopped dwelling on the sadness. I stopped dwelling on all the things that shoulda, woulda, coulda. And that energetically shifted me open to experience memories without great sadness and loss. So we can use our memory of the old chapter to help ourselves or to hurt ourselves. And when we're using our memory of the old chapter to help ourselves, we have creative, fresh thinking to, he to help us go forward. When we're using our memory of the old chapter to hurt ourselves, we close down energetically and we feel frustrated with where we're at, annoyed with what's still happening, disappointed with the old, in regret and remorse about the past. Those feelings are letting us know the way we're thinking about the old chapter isn't helpful. And if we want to shift into our new chapter, not just intellectually, oh yeah, I'd love to be in a new chapter. I wish I was there already. If we want to shift into a new chapter energetically, we want to notice how we're using our memory against ourselves or for ourselves. Now, your, your old chapter might be, I'm in this job, I hate this job, I want out of this job, I'd like my new chapter to be here. But I want you to see right now that the, the, the beginning stage of you moving to the new chapter isn't just about getting a new job. It's about you opening up energetically to the new chapter which means getting a fresh perspective on the old chapter first. And a fresh perspective on the old chapter comes with paying attention to how you're really thinking about it. Drop me a message, is this making sense? or not. And I won't be offended if some of you feel confused because I sometimes don't know what's coming out of my mouth when I'm talking here. <laughs> so good, Beverly saying yes. Okay, anybody, is there confusion anywhere? Please drop me a message, ask me a question in the chat box, come on to the screen if you feel up to it. I always love that. Okay, is it? Hi, Kinneret. Hi. Hi. So, you know, the meditation, uh, this is about uh, I, 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 what came forward to the person that I dated uh, oh, a while back. But doing the meditation actually brought the energy back mm -hmm. of the connection. Mm -hmm. So I found it actually less releasing. Like I, it might have been more, you know, if I didn't need to bring him, like almost resurrect him back from the past, you know, with, with the cords, and then actually imagining the cords between us, it was actually bringing it back more, mm -hmm. and I think bring it more more into my attention today versus just letting it go, moving on with my life. Mm -hmm. That was what I noticed. So did he show up or did you choose him for the meditation? Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it felt like that was what came up. Okay. Okay. Well, this is the power of thought. We think about it and it comes alive. So you've just demonstrated a really beautiful example. Thank you, even if it was uncomfortable to you, for everybody, that 
when we think about a situation or a person or a place or a thing, especially if we've already put it to bed, immediately the feelings can come back up. Now, here's where the game changer is. Based on your thinking, that will either feel clean and clear and good or murky and uncomfortable and whatever. Okay. So again, we want to use our memory. We want to use our memory. We want to use our thinking to help ourselves. The moment we're noticing discomfort, the chances are we're using our thinking about this person in a way that's not helpful. The person may be ready to let go. You may be ready to let go. But you want to just notice, you know, wow, the power of thought, the power of memory is we can bring old chapters back to life. Here's the good news. It also means we can bring a new chapter to life. Okay. It also means we can begin to see afresh. And so closing the door in the old may sometimes bring up a discomfort, depending on your relationship to comfort or discomfort. And it may also just bring up a fresh new beginning for you. Either way, whilst you can't control the thinking that comes into your head, you do get to choose what you pay attention to and for how long. So as I was swimming in the sea last week and I started thinking of Francesco and I was suddenly overcome with feelings of loss because it goes up and down depending on my state of mind and depending on my mood. And there I am swimming in the sea that we used to swim in together because we used to live right on that beach. And I'm starting to think to myself, oh my God, I'm here and I'm swimming in your sea and you're not here. And these feelings of sadness and loss begin to come in. And then I remember, this isn't a helpful way to use my memory about Francesco. This isn't a helpful way to use my memory about the sea I'm currently swimming in. That in itself closed the door on the old chapter of thinking about my experience in a sad way. Might sound simplistic, but it's the most helpful piece of information that I can share with you today is that you really can close the door on the old chapter by noticing how you feel when you think about it. Let me remind you this piece too, everybody. How you feel about your old chapter means nothing about the old chapter or the person or the place. It just means that the way you think about it is generating that experience. My sadness at Francesco's loss means nothing about Francesco means nothing about how much I loved Francesco. People sometimes say, oh, you know, you suffer so much because you loved so much. I don't think so. <laughs> you, you, we suffer so much because we get wedded to our thinking. The more we suffer does not mean the more we love and vice versa. So what we want to start to do is we want to see that the old chapter can be seen with a fresh perspective. 
and how we're using our thinking about the old chapter, how we're using our memory about the old chapter is questionable. It doesn't mean anything about the old chapter. It doesn't mean anything about the person. It doesn't mean anything about the place. It's just what we're choosing in that moment to experience. Questions, comments, experiences. I have a question, Grace. Yeah, go ahead. Pamela and then Kenneth again. Pamela? Okay. Yes, in my family, I was the middle daughter of two sons, three children, the middle child. And for some reason, I was designated as the daughter with the emotional problems, the daughter who is woe is me, the sort of the pathetic, the one that, the problem child. And I no longer am like that in the real world, except in my family's designated place. So that's the chapter I'm closing. And it's the leaving a stereotype and forming my own new identity. So the closing the chapter on that is not necessarily like, I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait, but do you have any words of advice for that particular situation? Is your experience of yourself, the problem child, woe is me? Is that your experience? Not now, I'm, I'm great. I mean, I can do anything I want. I feel, I feel liberated. I have a successful museum that I own. I have many good friends. I mean, not many, but I have real friends and I have. So, I mean, their experience of you has nothing to do with you. Yeah. It I mean, never beginning to. It never did. It never, it, they're designating a label to you was based on how they use their thinking or their memory about you whether or not you take that on you accept that as your designated role and label is up to you but it's it's not their experience of you has nothing to do with you i know it's it's just being the middle child it was just and i'm the only daughter and daughters are more emotional and sons, my brothers went away to, to high school. They went to boarding schools. I stayed yeah. home. And If that looks real to you, okay. But it doesn't. if it doesn't look real to you, then energetically, you're not there. That's, you're, that's not old chapter closed. Well it's done. Such, <laughs> such a relief. Thank you. We're there. Yeah. Well done. Thanks, Pamela. Kenneridge, okay. come back on, sweetheart. Yeah, so I think that it, it's my it, uh, relationship with the thinking that came up that needs to be looked at. So let's say that my thinking about the past does bring me discomfort and agitation. Yeah. You know, like I was like, okay, no, I just... I'm in a different space now, but then when I recall the person, <laughs> there it is, you know, my agitation comes back, which is the thinking. Yeah. And so now what do I do with that? Well, if, let me ask you this. Can you sudden, can you see it's the relationship to your thinking rather than the resurrection of the person? Or does it yeah. look like it is the person? Yeah, no, I, I, I am seeing that it's my thinking about the person. Right. But it's there. You know, I think of the person, poof, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> and we all have thinking. those spaces. Yeah, we all have those spaces where it, it just, we think about it and there's the feeling again. Like some of my clients will get that discomfort 
when it comes to finances. So they're going about their day and they're not talking about finances and they're absolutely fine and they're creative. And then they get on a, a, a coaching call and they want to talk about their finances. And then all these feelings that they didn't feel all day come up because the moment we think about it, we bring it to life. OK, that's kind of cool to realize. Oh, my God, when I'm not thinking about this, I'm fine. It may seem a bit simplistic, but, you know, I imagine at this stage in your breakup, you're thinking less and less about him or her, okay? And when it does come up, just like in the case of my own uh, loss, when the memory does come up and it's uncomfortable at times, you're just noticing Oh, I'm, I'm back in that thinking. This isn't helpful. The way, I'm, the way I'm seeing this isn't fresh. This is where we have a choice in some cases to literally shut the door on our thoughts. But what's key here, Kinneret, I think to share with you, at least this is what's coming in, is The more you see, it's the relationship to your thinking about, the, about it. It means nothing about the love you had or the love you lost. That's the game changer. Yeah, I can see that now. And then it doesn't matter. Like the, the moment I see that it really truly is just thinking then it doesn't matter I don't need to do anything about it I get it yeah Yeah. you you really that that alone begins to close the old chapter like that's you being energetically instead of intellectually yeah you see the difference yeah that was really helpful you're so welcome you saw it yeah to separate you know thought versus per the person yeah yeah good Good. Yeah. Thank you. Charlene, you up next? Oh, on mute, darling. Can't hear. I, I just switched over my device because I was on my phone. Now I'm on my computer, but I'm glad you called on me because I did want to say something. I am not happy with the pace of how I've been doing things. And I realized today that I still have, because as you know, I have a music industry background Mm -hmm. and I still have that performance mentality in my business, which makes me speed up. Because, you know, being on stage, it's all about adrenaline and it's all about getting an applause. And I realized that I have been applying that to my business. And I'm actually close to tears. I'm not happy with that. And uh, it's very stressful to live like that. And it's very tiring. I've had a headache all day, you know, just, just tired. Um, and there's things that I've got to do and I just don't want to do them. <laughs> I just want to rest. I really so what, want to rest. What? So why wouldn't you do that instead? I have rested today, but I just feel like this pace of output that I'm currently on, the amount of action I'm taking, but it's more of a mentality, I've got a, I should, I must, Mm -hmm. that is making me feel unhappy. And like I said, I, I have rested today. I took like two or three hours out to just 
be in bed. And I fell asleep for maybe 30 minutes. And now I'm back at my desk and I'm just like. So I would, I would hazard a guess that you haven't rested as much as you think you have. You may have stopped working physically, but your mind certainly hasn't rested. What I'm hearing for what it's worth, Charlene, is you have a habit of pressure. I do. And there's something really good about being able to catch yourself in the habit of pressure because it literally helps you take your foot off the gas. I know the whole world will suggest put your foot on the gas. You know, as I've said this before, when an animal gets lost in the wild, they stop and regain their bearings before heading off in a fresh direction. Mm. Humans speed up. Humans mm. are the only species to get faster when they get worried, when mm. they get lost, when they put a gun to their head about what they need to do, they speed up. So, you know, I would like to take a moment for you and say uh, the fact you can see, oh, my habit of pressure is beginning to rise, is the beginning of change because your old chapter can be letting go of habits of urgency, adrenaline, stress and pressure as a means to getting things done. If that's the only way you get things done, you're gonna be on an on off circuit your whole life, especially running your own business. You know, you, you, you'll be revving yourself up and then you'll be having to take diners to come back down, you know, whatever that might be. <laughs> Hopefully it's, it's something natural, but you, you, you just innocently have a habit of pressure. And, and that's the space we wanna just, let go from you will find yourself without a gun to your head getting everything you need to get done in a shorter amount of time because you just wake up in a fresh state of mind and you're able to perform but mm -hmm. be gentle in the process you're on learning a way of producing and performing. Yeah. You're transitioning. And it's interesting because I stopped wanting to be a singer for this very reason. I didn't want to be on the go all the time. I didn't want to always be traveling and I just I just wanted out. But I do I do recognize that there is a mentality also that I desire to journey away from. But I think the meditation, it just helped me get in touch with how I'm really feeling. Good. Um, yeah. Good, yeah, yeah. You know, when we're transitioning, we want to be gentle with ourselves. You know, I want to say to all of you, let yourself off the hook. Because I know most of you don't let yourselves off the hook. If anything, you put yourselves on the hook further, beating yourselves up and not being very nice to yourselves because you're not getting done what you think needs to be done already. You know, if you actually write a list of what needs to get done, you might find that most of the things on that list are kind of irrelevant. They don't need done immediately. They don't need done right now. And nobody's going to die because you don't do them today. So you want to get into conversation, not with Bob, the drunk guy in your head, who's putting the gun to your head, telling you to hurry up and get it, get it done. Your pace isn't fast enough. And you don't know how to perform without adrenaline. You don't want to be listening to him. You want to be getting into connection with divine mind, creating space to hear divine mind's guidance for you. And sometimes that is 
dear God, I'm out of zinc, I'm out of energy, I'm out of resources. I'm look, please give me a resurrection. Then get out of the way. Wait for the resurrection. Go read some books, go watch some movies, go do something. If it feels better to be creating something, because then you have less noise on your in your head, go create your email or your financial calendar or whatever it is. But I can promise you from a fresh, clear state of mind, you'll get everything done in half the time. Is that helpful? We can get so frustrated with ourselves. And yet that frustration isn't coming from the bigger part of ourselves. It's coming from the gun to our head. Are you seeing anything fresh, Charlene, in what I've shared? Or are you just feeling a bit more release? Um. I think I just, I saw myself actually go into the cinema and I just felt so relieved. I started to cry. Just taking a real break because I work from home. So not just watching Netflix, but actually leaving my home to go out to watch a film. Yeah. <sighs> that feels so good. I love movies because they take us out of our story into somebody else's and that alone is a break from the mind. Anything you feel relief around is a sure sign wisdom's talking to you. Yeah. So enjoy that and see how it goes. Thank you. Pray for guidance, pray for a resurrection, but just know the less we're in the way with what we think needs to be happening by a certain time on a certain day, the easier it is for things just to happen and get done in flow. I mean, I, I personally, you know, went, I went out at 12 o'clock today and I thought, I'll just go for a walk. I didn't come back till half two. I ended up going for a walk and going to the shops and having lunch with my friends. And I was like, shit, when am I going to get this email created? But you know what? I came back so refreshed because I, you know, my, my Bob was saying, you've been out too long, Grace, and now you don't have enough time. And you see now how you're going to write an email. But I just opened the computer and I sat down and I just began to type and do what I needed to do and everything got taken care of. So you want to trust what you're guided to. So because I have to finish a little earlier today than usual, I would like to just take a moment to share with you that if this has been helpful, I have some good news. We recently had a, a really successful four-week program called Your New Chapter, and it, it launched and it finished and it was beautiful all in the space of four weeks. I'm reopening the doors to that program, and it is definitely for you if you're navigating a life change. Maybe you've been through a loss. Maybe your business looks a certain way, but you want to bring it into a fresh look. Maybe you're just going through a life change in terms of your career, your love life, your personal life, or you could be turning a certain age. And for you, the next chapter is looking like one that needs to be filled with more meaning. So this program is for you if you're navigating that life change, if you're looking for support and to be held through uh, your new chapter, really, you know, if you're if you're looking for 
a, a place in which you can close the door on the old gently and come into a fresh new experience. It's for you if you feel scattered a lot of the time and you want focus. It's for you if you want really to begin to deepen your relationship and connection to divine mind's direction for you, rather than what Bob the drunk guy is coming up with in your head. You will absolutely discern the difference between wisdom speaking to you and everything else in your head, because this program is designed to help you get out of all that chatter and into feelings of clarity, well-being, peace, and focus. So the program will reopen with a gorgeous early bird pricing offer. And it also has a fabulous bonus. You can check out all the details. Uh, I'll send you the link. And it'll reopen on August 10th. So if you're interested in blossoming into a new chapter, in, you know, in really taking the time and the space to experience what that is for you. Um, this one is for you. Gracefulcoaching.net forward slash your new chapter. If you were on the original course with me um, the first time around, you can join again, get in touch. I have a different price for you if you were on the original course. Let me just pop the link here gracefulcoaching.net forward slash your new chapter. So we've got the early bird there. We've got the bonus there. We've got the start date there. Everything you need is over there to have a look. And my coaching program's different to the, to the clinics. Here, as you can tell, there's a lot of me um, sharing, you're getting a lot of personal, and there's time, of course, for the meditation and some time for the for for your uh, questions. My coaching programs go a lot deeper. All right, so um, whilst you get a taste here on the clinic, you really get the full experience over on over on the programs. And if you haven't been on one of my programs yet, I really encourage you to uh, to consider this one because. Uh, it's just, it's a game changer. We've had women in there in the last round who simply have been writing to me to say that they launched their business ideas, that they've, they've come up with things that they hadn't expected they were even able to achieve in their, in their third chapter in this lifetime, um, that they've just really quietened the self-critical noise and they're hearing their wisdom and intuition more. So you can't expect to deepen that relationship with divine mind. You can't expect to begin to really go from scattered to focused. You can't expect to open up your bandwidth energetically and mentally, not just intellectually. So you call in bigger things. And you can't expect to receive practical guidance and steps on creating your new chapter, whatever that's going to look like for you. In any case, you begin taking action and alignment instead of beating up on yourself. You know, Charlene, you're such a beautiful example today of many of the clients who come to me because they tend to be stuck in that level of beating up, which gets them stuck in not being able to take the action they'd like to take. So thank you for sharing that today. All right, um, everybody. Grace, oh, it didn't come through, it didn't come through the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it just went to Pamela for some reason. Here we go. Uh, how do I send it to everybody? It says it, you can't put on the top this too. Oh, here we go. Press everyone. There you How's go. that? Has that come through? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, all righty. Great to see you all today. Ladies, I'll be back next Tuesday with a coaching clinic and uh, feel free to be in touch. I look forward to hearing from you and I hope today was helpful. Lots of love. Yes, thank Bye. you so much. Thanks for your questions. Bye. It was helpful. Thank you. Bye.